Okay, guys, um, we already started with the topic about the periodic table last week. We, uh, we talked a little bit about the history of the periodic table, and we saw uh, about the history of Dimitri Mendeleev. Okay, remember that video that I projected. Now, uh, it's nice. History is nice. I like it. I'm not against it. But it's more important that we know the structure of the of the periodic table. Okay. So uh, I want to show you this. Mm, is that I wanted to use the iPad, but I couldn't. I'm sorry. I'm not an iOS person, so I really don't know how to use the iPad uh, with the PDF application that I use in the computer. Uh, well. So, uh, as you can see, this is in your booklet in the page 23, okay? So, you can see that we have 18 groups. Some other periodic tables shows you uh, the same 18 groups, but divided into group A and B, more or less, the sections that we have at Liberty, more or less. But it's quite different. So, you can see that uh, we have three different colors in the arrangement of those elements. Those that are green represent the metals, okay? So, by just taking a look at the colors, green represent the metals, you know that there are many more metals than other kind of elements. So, those metals come from lithium, which is the element 3, okay? And also, well, those names I cannot pronounce, okay? I have you can see there is bismuth, okay? And we have some other elements that are in, I don't know what color is that. I would say it's orange, but I know it's not orange. I'm sorry, I don't know much about, about colors. I should have studied architecture, I, I would know. Anyway, those only um, seven elements that you can see there, boron, silicon, germanium, arsenic, antimony, tellurium, and polonium, those elements are known as metalloids, okay? And they are, as you can see in the periodic table, they are in between, between metals, which are the green elements, and the non-metals. So, say, guys, there's no need that you know all the elements, okay? I always say that there is no need that you know that you know them all. But at least you should be able to know how to recognize the non-metals from the metals, okay? So those non-metals are located in the right side of the periodic table. Those that are in the group Here, those I know. Well, anyway, those are in the group eighteen. Let's not use this one. Are the noble gases? Okay. And as I told you the other day, they are novel because they are reactive. They are not harmful, okay? So they are noble gases because of that reason. These elements that are next to the noble gases, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, acetine, and this one I won't pronounce, but these elements are known as the halogens. It's a group 17, and they are very highly reactive metals, uh, sorry, non-metals, okay? Those elements are very useful. We're going to be using them a lot. So when I say, guys, you need to learn the periodic table, I didn't say that, like, you need to memorize full the periodic table, but you should know how to recognize the elements. You should know that, for example, chlorine is not a metal. You should know that selenium is a non-metal. That oxygen is a non-metal. Also, there's another non-metal that is not uh, that is not uh, in this position. 
in the reactor but it's also a non-metal and that is hydrogen hydrogen gas one more thing that i think you should know is that helium and hydrogen the first two elements in the periodic table they are not there just randomly no scientists have found that the first two elements in, in after the Big Bang took place were both hydrogen and helium. So those are the, the ancient elements, okay? They have been here for so many years, since the beginning of time, since the Big Bang, okay? So in this case, we're talking about the first two elements in probably history. They are the two more important elements. They are the base of all elements that we know so far.